Hi, hello there. Uh, if you're watching this, I guess it's because you've seen an application, my application, to, our, to your institution for a position either in uh, physics or mathematics. Well, I shall introduce myself first. My name is Giuseppe Bartla, and I am a theoretical physicist from uh, Palma, not Palma de Mallorca, from Mallorca, the, Bale the Balearic Islands uh, in Spain. Um, I thought that uh, having this kind of uh, brief uh, resume online would be a nice idea, in addition to just having plain documents uh, when applying for a position such as this one. And uh, in this way, um, you as a recruiter could have maybe uh, a deeper let's say, uh, insight before taking uh, any or before taking or carrying out any any interview. So, because obviously pictures cannot talk and you can say a lot of things on a document, but these kind of things, why not? I thought it would be fine, it would be a nice idea to have, to have it uh, in, in uh, online. So, yes, uh, in this kind of uh, let's say interviews, uh, usually uh, the recruiter asks the, the interested person about his, his or her background and this kind of thing. So um, I'll talk about uh, myself uh, a bit and then later on I shall discuss you know, typical things like what I expect about this position and, and, all, and so on and so forth. Well, um, I graduated uh, from high school in 1994 uh, here in, in Mallorca, Spain. And uh, by the way, I got uh, this uh, prize for getting uh, very high grades. And uh, right after that, I took my exams for, uh, for college. So, uh, and I started, I started uh, to study uh, physics uh, here in, in Mallorca, in Spain. Uh, that was in 1994, as I said. I finished in 1998, and um, right after that, I took my uh, social service, which was compulsory at the time. And what else? Um, in the year 2099, yeah, late 99, I started a PhD. Uh, I was really eager to do something else in the career. I was really interested in things, uh, not only just uh, for making uh, a living after that, just just for the sake of learning and and of course, when you're young, you don't real, real, you don't actually real realize what you want to do exactly when you start a career. Uh, it was just vocational, of course. Uh, so what I did is to study a PhD on quantum mechanics, quantum information, which is my, ma my major, so to speak. But actually, uh, the whole range uh, of physics uh, from thermostatistics, uh, supercond superconductivity, uh, condensed matter physics, uh, is the are the kind of things that I, I used to to study and I used to do as a, as, as a researcher. Uh, while finishing or while completing my uh, PhD, I um, I travel of course uh, abroad. I had I took many courses. Uh, I met a lot of people as usual, and uh, I. I got you know, a good background uh, of, you know, of connections, uh, mainly in Europe. What happened next? Well, um, there's a gap uh, from 2006 when I finished my PhD, which by the way, my, my thesis was entitled Characterization of Quantum Entangled States and Information Measures. I got cum laude, by the way. And in, by the time I started to, to be um, an assistant, an assistant professor at the same university. 
I taught there basically uh, all kind of uh, courses, basic uh, physics, um, general physics practice uh, in the lab. Uh, what else I took? Uh, uh, I gave uh, courses on nuclear physics, low energy nuclear physics, of course, uh, like uh, basic stuff, uh, dosimetry, uh, some decay experiments, alpha, beta, and gamma, and um, and also taught uh, not only undergraduate students but also PhD students. In, in on quantum information and among other things, among, among other courses. So uh, I, I actually have a virtual um, uh, virtual audience of uh, different different type of uh, of students. Uh, what else? Uh, before completing my PhD, I tried to figure out uh, a future which was uncertain because our university is small and unfortunately things work in a different way. I mean, you have to know com people in order to have uh, contacts and eventually get a position. So in my case it was a little bit different. Uh, so I thought that maybe having um, something safe in a way would be better. So. While I was finishing my PhD, I took some exams and I eventually became a civil servant. I became a professor of mathematics in high school. So uh, ever since 2005, I got this position. Now I'm on leave. I'll explain you why later on. Uh, so in a way, I know very well how to deal with the students at virtually at any uh, stage ranging from, let's say, 16 years old to grown-ups. So, uh, this is uh, and actually the fact of teaching mathematics at this age has provided me a very good sense of how to deal uh, with uh, these students, uh, and the practices, the uh, all the things, all, all, and I have skills of about how to deal with them properly. And, and all kind of uh, on all these kind of things. What happens afterward is that I, I still wanted to do something else, so that's why I engaged in this part-time uh, job in, as an assistant professor, as I said, in 2007. What happened? Uh, unfortunately, my my advisor passed away. She was Montserrat Casas. Uh, she, by the time she was rector of the university. She passed away, and and that was the end of it, in the sense that all possible contacts for me to have a, for having a position somewhere in Europe, I mean, working through contacts and and all that, and all that, and all those things just uh, disappeared, because uh, I don't know about your place, but uh, in Spain is very common, unfortunately. To have to meet to to need to need to have these uh, very uh, precise contacts to have a position. Unfortunately, this is the case. Uh, I'm not describing something actually very new. You have to have very close ties to people to get something. And actually, uh, it's the same case in in Europe, all over Europe. I have friends who basically tell me the same thing, but. Um, as I said, uh, it was uh, the end for me, for having uh, the hope of uh, having a position here. So, um, but I, I did not give up. I did not give up on this. I continued to do research, uh, and at the same time having this these two positions, like a teacher and a, a assistant professor until uh, year 2013 when I got an offer from uh, an American university in Kuwait and I said yes so I, I went there to Kuwait and I taught at this uh, private university I taught uh, physics and mathematics and that was a very nice experience uh, I met a lot of people I got to know how uh, Middle East students are in the Gulf region uh, very much alike in different countries, 
like a Qatar or the Emirates, as far as I, I know. So uh, this is uh, an advantage because uh, what I'm looking for is actually to work in a in a academic environment, a research center, a college, university, based in, in the Middle East. It's very difficult in Europe right now to get anything. Actually, I would say that I have lost all confidence of getting anything in in Europe because of the crisis that we have right now. It's huge. Spain is spending very little money on research traditionally, but now it's is the worst possible time ever, I would say. And since we are at the, the last countries that we spent a considerable amount of money, wages, on this, I would say that, uh, and in particular, my region, the Balak Islands, have a very low budget on this. This implies that uh, probably in my region, the region where I live in, Spain, is one of the ones which invests little money on research, but on the contrary, it is one of the best ones as far as publications are concerned. And so this paradox uh, is a little bit difficult to explain, but basically I would say that we're very hard-working persons. So, um, what was the point? Yeah, this was uh, a little bit of my introduction. And yes, I'm sorry, I, I, I lost uh, thought of the, uh, train of thought. Yes, after Kuwait, uh, in, I mean 2015, last year, I uh, came back to Spain. And by the way, I went there with my family, uh, my wife and two, and two daughters, Maria Omar and Regina. And uh, I started doing by myself, alone, with no budget, no income, uh, considerable research. Every day, on a daily basis, I was doing research on basic quantum information, so I, the outcome of that was uh, several papers, good papers in journals such as Physical Review A, Quantum Information Processing, and the last one, the last ones that I obtained was in Chaos Journal and um, Annals of Physics, Annals of Physics. So, uh, from the point of view of either research or teaching, I have a very solid background. So I can, um, if I join your institution, the first thing that, that I would do is to obtain funds for research. And if that is not a priority, say, never mind. I'm a very hard-working person. I know how to deal with the students. And uh, this, this uh, fact of being, uh, having experience in both Europe and, and the Middle East, I think is, um, is something to be taken into account. What do... Uh, Recruiters ask to people. Well, you know, the usual questions like, why should I, should we choose you instead of someone else? Well, this is something that I cannot, of course, uh, as, uh, re answer properly. I would say, why not? Why not? Because I cannot tell about the others, but I can tell about myself. I'm a very hardworking person. I come from a humble family. Today is uh, July 19th of 2016. And last June, I turned 40. So what I'm looking for is a stability. I'm a very hard-working person, as I said. I can commit to excellence in either... I do commit to excellence in either research and or uh, teaching. And uh, I will always provide you with uh, a new insight in, in, into the department, physics department or mathematics department. So I can, because of my, my major, being a theoretical physicist, I virtually know the whole range of uh, mathematics uh, tools and uh, physics tools to tackle different problems. So for me, it's not a problem to deal with different things. So basically, this is it. Uh, I appreciate very much uh, your listening to this recording, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks very much.